so my name is Jordan. Um, I've been a teacher at Hunan Normal University since the beginning of term. Um, I've never taught formally in a classroom before, but through work experience in different companies, I've been involved in training as well as some other uh, related to teaching um, positions in my workplace before. Um, I was a recent graduate of the University of Toronto and I, I studied geography there. Um, and yeah, it, it's been a great experience so far uh, teaching at Hanan Normal University. So my name is Faye. I also graduated from the University of Toronto um, with a specialization in English literature. So I have a specialization in the teaching stream and I've worked in China before, but at a high school. So with a younger group of kids teaching English and this time around, I wanted to work with an older group of students. So I also came to Hunan Normal University and yeah, it's been a really great experience so far. And I'm doing the writing stream there and Jordan, you're doing the oral stream, right? Do you teach different classes at Hunan Normal University? Yeah, that's right. So for me, I'm doing mostly writing classes with second year students and a few oral classes. And yeah, and so I'm doing the oral stream. So uh, most of our classes revolve around uh, I'll give a short introduction to the material that we're working with, and I try my best to get the students engaged, not just with me, but with each other. Uh, there's a heavy emphasis on speaking English with each other in the classroom, whether that be working on a project together or delivering short speeches. Um, I always tell them we only have a certain amount of time together every week, and outside of those hours, uh, you may or may not have to use your English, but make sure that uh, while we're together, we make the most of our time. So. Uh, the oral classes are very much immersive in English for the duration of the class. Thank you. And uh, I was wondering, like, what's your uh, normal like working schedule for a day or a week? Yeah, so uh, the normal working schedule for me is four days working, one day off during the week, and then uh, the weekends are, are generally off. Um, I teach about three class, up to three classes a day. Uh, and with that being said, there's always a break in the middle of the day for about two and a half hours for lunch. Yeah. And yours, your schedule is pretty much the same, right? Yeah, so I have um, three days off, four days working. In terms of teaching hours, about, um, I'd say, 12 to 13, no, 12 hours teaching. And then if you add on office hours and lesson planning and things like that. Um, some of my classes are a little bit larger. I have four classes of 60 students and three classes of 30 students. So a lot of it also is, is homework grading and things like that. But yeah, the 11.30 to 2.30 break in the middle of every day is, is really good for, for using that time. The, the latter class, is that for non-English major students? Oh, those are for English majors as well. So lots of English <laughs> majors that are not normal. Yeah, um, they're for the second year students. Uh, English education majors, and then my oral classes are for translation majors. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they have um, 60 students in that class, so I've got a little microphone in the in the lecture hall. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's good. So about your accommodation, how do you like that? Yeah, sure. Did you wanna? Yeah, yeah. So uh, the accommodations have been very good. Um, I have a single apartment with a living room area and uh, an attached bathroom, a private bathroom. Um, with that being said, we're very close to campus, so uh, I can I can get ready and get out and grab some breakfast or lunch and then head to class right away. Uh, I don't have to trek across the city just to get to my classes, so that's very helpful to me. Uh, but the accommodations themselves have been great. Um, heating, uh, the water, pressure, everything like that has been good. So yeah, it's it's worked out really well as far as the accommodations go. Yeah, and what I will add is that even though, you know, naturally it's a, it's a university, some of the buildings are a little bit older, but the department is, is really good at yeah. responding when you're like, oh, I have like this little issue here, they're, they're really fast at, at responding to things like that. So I think overall it's really convenient, which is nice, like the location is really, really good for work. Mm -hmm. And teacher Wang, she is always there when you have problems. Yeah, she yeah, does she's everything. Great. She's amazing. Like um, all of the, all the foreign teachers are always like, Wang Li, Wang Li, help, <laughs> Wang Li, Wang Li. And she's like, okay, okay, you and you and you will help you to do this. I'll help you to do that. So it's been really, she's definitely like handled most of the yeah. paperwork, I think, for the school and, and things like that. So yeah, really responsive. She, she works really hard, I think, the whole yeah. department. Yeah. And even just adjusting to like life 
uh, away from home, she's been very good at helping us yeah. uh, handle situations like setting up our bank accounts and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, actually, Wang Li is actually the person we speak to. Oh. She's from the, I think that's the international uh, corporation or something mm -hmm. department of the university. Uh, she actually does the majority of our any kind of work that we need help with, uh, mm -hmm. she, she's the first point of contact uh, as far as administrative or accommodation situations go. Uh, when it comes to the actual academic part of things, um, she's a great person to go to to find out who we need to speak to mm -hmm. within the department itself. But we have a few points of contact within the actual academic department uh, to get more information about scheduling, uh, classroom materials, um, coursework, grading, things of that nature. We, yes. we work with a few different professors and teachers and, and things like that. About the salary, you know, university salary is not as much as like primary school or, or mm -hmm. like training centers. So uh, how can you save uh, the money uh, based on your university salary? Oh, oh yeah. Do you so? Oh, sure, sure. Well, I'd have to add that um, based on the working hours, it's, it's quite good because I don't think we work as many hours as working at a, a training center with younger students. Um, and also accommodations are, are covered. So our rent and our water and things like that, we don't have to worry about things um, in terms of living. So I think that makes a really big difference in terms of your savings. And then also the city that we're in, Xinxiang, it's the, the living cost is quite low and eating on campus is really quite cheap. So as so long as we're not going out all the time, eating at restaurants, you know, like spending frivolously, it's actually quite, quite realistic in terms of savings. Like. To summarize it, um, being on the university campus, you save a lot of money, especially if you're not going out a lot. And even if we were to go out a lot, um, we'd still have quite a bit of money left over, I believe, because Xinjiang, like you were saying, has a quite a low cost of living. Yeah, one of the foreign teachers, one day he he, he brought a whole guitar home. And we're like, where did you get this? And he's like, oh, I, bought a, I, I just bought a guitar. <laughs> so it's like you have some extra spending like, mm -hmm. room as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and considering the hours that we work, um, the salary is quite high for the hours that we work. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's quite reasonable. appropriate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like actually the hourly pay for university is higher, but mostly pays lower because of the workload. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you mentioned Xinxiang. How do you like Xinxiang so far? I enjoy it. I come from a smaller town outside of uh, the Toronto area. And for me, this is, <clears throat> sorry, um, for me, Xinjiang is, uh, it's a good match for me because uh, the pace of life is quite a bit slower. Um, and if I do want to go out, I want to go to some big shopping malls, I can still find the Western products that I enjoy from home and things like that. Um, so it's a good balance for me. And on top of that, uh, if I want to travel to uh, some of the bigger cities, I can take a 30 minute train to Zhengzhou, I can take a train to Beijing, and it's, it's fairly close and it's fairly inexpensive uh, to do that. So for me, I, I've really enjoyed Xinjiang so far. Mm -hmm. Granted, like there, there are some things, of course, that are different from home, right? Like you can't find every everything you want, but yeah. that's part of that's part of the Travel, experience yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, you're you're away from home, so that makes sense. And then also, everybody's quite friendly, like quite approachable, since it is a smaller a smaller city. Yeah, and it's also easy to get to to one point to another, right? You can take a taxi, you can take the bus. The transportation system is quite good, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you find something like, uh, uh, do you have some uh, awkward experience during your mm. time there? Awkward. You know, if anything, I would have to say it would be with the with the students. Mm -hmm. Actually, sometimes, you know, you're you're working with the students and then there's a little bit of a miscommunication or, or something like that. And they're sometimes they want to be respectful, right? They want to be um, very patient towards their their teachers. So sometimes they, they just won't say anything like if you've misunderstood them. So we'll have a whole conversation. Oh, yes. <laughs> we'll have a whole conversation about one thing and they'll be like, yeah, yeah, OK. And then afterwards, they'll be like, actually, we were asking you about this. <laughs> and I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, but that's that's really just about it. About it. it usually happens in the classroom, I think, miscommunications like, like that. For example, interacting with the students, sometimes, like you were saying, you might misunderstand them. For instance, I had a conversation with a student about a project that they were working on, and uh, 
for the duration of the conversation, I thought they were talking about taking the bus. But in actuality, they came back to me later that day and they said, actually, I was talking about bathing. By taking a bath. By taking a bath. <laughs> so you didn't so answer I any mixed up questions. bath and bus. And so we had an entirely great conversation, a productive conversation about something that had no bearing on her project. Uh, but in the end, we resolved it. But overall, not really many awkward moments. Mm -hmm. and I think sometimes they just, they don't want to be rude and say, no, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah they don't want to be too, uh, too forward or something like yeah. that. Yeah, Chinese people, they're more like subtle. <laughs> you got to pay attention to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And uh, do you find uh, something uh, not to your liking about your experience? So far, everything's been pretty good, at least yeah. for me. Yeah. I'm thinking also, like, it's important to, to keep an open mind to, like, you know, if some things don't turn out as expected, then your expectations probably weren't quite aligned with, with reality, right? So as long as you keep that, that kind of space for adjustment, I don't think there's anything that will make you go, like, oh, I don't like that, or, or so on and so forth. Like, for example, when I was like, oh, I have some classes with 60 students, like, that's a lot of students. But actually, when you go to the classroom and you, you give yourself a little bit of time to adjust, you find it's quite realistic and quite manageable. Or, for example, if you have really early morning classes, like I'm not a morning person, but then you give yourself a little bit of time to adjust, and you're like, yeah, it's, it's a reasonable schedule. Like, all the expectations are quite reasonable, and everything that's been provided is also, like, quite realistic mm -hmm. as well. I think. So yeah, nothing that's made either of us go like, oh, that's terrible. You know, it's, it's been, it's been, yeah, it's been good. Mm -hmm. uh, both of you graduated uh, last year. So mm -hmm. do you have any advice to new graduates who are seeking for like teaching positions in China? Oh, I think, I guess most importantly, you have to know what you're looking for because the age ranges are so wide. You can't just apply to every single job that pops up being like, oh, I can do this, I can do that, or I can do that. I think you have to be specific in your search, like what age group do I want to teach? What kind of subjects do I want to teach? Where do I want to work? You really have to narrow in on that. And also it's important to be flexible as well. I think you're not going to get, you know, the exact job that you want right away. You're not going to get the salary that you want right away. And to be open-minded about that. I think. Definitely. And doing your research beforehand really helps with that. Um, I would say if anybody's a new graduate looking to teach in China, um, my suggestion would be to do a lot of reading online. Um, reach out to some people that you know that might have done it before. Um, find people online who might have had experiences doing uh, a similar thing to what you want to do. And going back to what Fei had said, um, you have to kind of know yourself. If, if you know that you're not great with children, you may not want to go towards the kindergarten route. Um, However, the kindergarten route is great for uh, being active and you do make, uh, you do make quite a bit. Uh, but at the same time, that's not for everybody. Um, if you want to work with older students, uh, the university route is great, uh, mostly because like uh, the benefits that we mentioned earlier is you have less working hours. The pay is great for the hours that you do work. Uh, the convenience of living close to your workplace um, but yeah, I would say definitely do some research, but also know yourself and come into it with an open mind, letting yourself kind of adapt to the situation, try to be as flexible as possible with also knowing your boundaries as well. I've been traveling uh, all over China for this holiday. Uh, where have you been traveled to? So, so far, um, we started in Xi'an and uh, we did a lot of traveling in the area. We got to see the Terracotta Army. Um, and then after that, we went to Beijing. And if you want to talk about what our next little travels are? Oh, yeah, sure. We made um, a stop in, oh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, we made a stop in Tinan briefly because I have a grandparent there. So we stopped there to see them. And then uh, we came to Hangzhou. And then mm -hmm. our last stop will be Shanghai and then back home to Xinxiao. So we made a little route like this. And every city has been a little bit different. Like the feel of each city, how people go around and, and live their life is a little different in each one. So that's also kind of kind of fun to experience, fun to see. And yeah, it's, it's quite a long break as well. Mm -hmm. Working at a, a university, it's really long for 
the Chinese New Year and, and winter holidays. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's ac actually for the university because mm -hmm. we have some uh, teachers. They are teaching at primary school. They started their break. I think um, on January twenty eighth, probably. Wow. Uh, yeah. And they start. I think next week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they will so just cool. have uh, about three weeks holiday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you experience like different style, like uh, the spirit of spring festival in different oh, yeah, cities? Yeah, yeah, like Xi'an, really, you could, you could really feel the, the festivities, the, like lanterns everywhere. A lot of um, families out with their kids, right? Yeah. They're taking the kids around to see all the sights. And so you'll always see a lot of children running around and, and things like that. A lot of great displays too, like lights everywhere. Lanterns. Lanterns. Absolutely. Yeah, like uh, big floats. Yeah, in Beijing as well. We were there right before the the holidays, so you'll see a lot. Just uh, like, how do you like your your university teaching in general in Xinjiang? What do you, uh, should I? Yeah, 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 yeah sure, sure. I I think the the best part is the is the students. Mm -hmm. They're really like quite receptive. They're really patient. Um, like they they ask a lot of good questions, which is nice to to also have people to converse with. So for me, actually, I've really, really enjoyed it. Um, I, for me, eventually what I'd like to do is continue on into my master's and PhD uh -huh. and uh, become a professor in geography. Oh. Um, so for me, this is really valuable experience in actually getting my hands dirty with teaching and like right. really <laughs> learning how to develop a lesson plan, develop a syllabus and deliver it over the course of a year. Um, I really enjoy working with the students, especially at this age group, because uh, they've had a lot of really good English teaching up until now. And yeah, for me, good. yeah, exactly. Their level is pretty good. And yeah. um, at this point, I can really push them. I can see, well, this is where their English level is now. Let's see how far we can take them in, in different directions. Um, maybe we want to work on, on developing their vocabulary so they can express themselves better. Or maybe we want to work on something more practical like uh, job interviews or, or um, school interviews, things like that. Um, I, I just really enjoy seeing the progress that they make in, in such short amount of time. So, sorry, in such a short amount of time. Um, I think that's really special to see with, with learners. Uh, I, I really enjoy it. For sure. So you would say it's a good like, way to, to, to develop your, your career path. I because think so. For me, I feel like it's a it's a great uh, it's a great experience for me to to have in in order to make sure that this is something that I do want to do. And I think it's confirmed that for me. Okay. I think it's confirmed that for That's me. That's good to know. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to imagine that like, across the Pacific and you're teaching here and to 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 the Chinese student you have never met before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard to, to figure out what it'll be like until you're there, right? Yeah, exactly. I, I wasn't quite sure what to expect. Uh -huh. um, like I said, I've, throughout my my university studies, mm -hmm. I also worked full time, oh. and um, I worked in a leadership role where not only was I involved with supervising a team of employees, mm -hmm. I was also um, developing or or delivering training modules to them. Right. So I had some experience with with like a, a teaching atmosphere, um, but this is unlike that. This is this is quite different, and um, it's been fun. It's been very fun. <laughs> yes, and so the rewarding. Are really fun. <laughs> yeah, the students are really great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they really are. Yeah. So, so who or like which one is more popular? Like which? You... Oh, <laughs> hard question. Actually, one student. What they did tell me, I think. I think you're probably the more popular one. No. I think. But what they did tell me, one of them was like, you know, Faye, I think Jordan is is scarier in the classroom. You oh, smile yeah. a lot. Sometimes Jordan gets very serious. They <laughs> they did tell me that. Okay. And I was like, yeah, no, I think I think you're you're, you're quite popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Especially <laughs> among those girl students. <laughs> yeah. That's the funny That's, thing. Uh, yeah, the, actually. The, our English classrooms usually it's like um like. 28 girls and two guys. If you're lucky, one. two guys. Like yeah. sometimes it's one boy for the entire yeah. class. Oh wow. And um, I think really the really who's popular is is that one male student <laughs> that in one the male. classroom. Yeah. Actually, yeah. it was a, I had a pretty funny experience where I asked the students to um, pick a classmate and right. um, yeah, so work in a pair and 
what I want you to do is over the weekend for your for your homework, right. I'd like you to interview your class and uh -huh. just uh -huh. learn maybe some things about them. What's their hometown? Mm -hmm. What are some of their hobbies? Mm -hmm. And at the end of the class, my the one male student in the class came up to me. He's like, um, "Sir, do you think I could work with one of my roommates, mm -hmm. who is obviously going to be another male student?" And I said, I, "I'd prefer you work with." Uh, one of your classmates because right. then you can deliver the information when you come next week right. and he says ah okay I'm like what are you worried about <laughs> and he says well you know I'm the only I'm the only boy in the classroom I'm like are you worried that that your classmates will think you're asking them on a date goes, yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it's a pretty funny, funny thing to come across. Right, 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 right. They are they're pretty shy about about talking to girls. <laughs> yeah. It's really funny. Yeah, or to be fair, like sometimes for group work, one mm -hmm. one of the other female students, she mentioned like, ah, oh, you know, sometimes group work is really hard because let's say you ask us to do a skit or something. Mm -hmm. You have like groups with five girls and then you have that one group where there's three girls and two guys. Right. And she's like, well, everybody else can practice in their dorms, but we don't have anyone to practice <laughs> because they live somewhere yeah, else. Yeah. They're like, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to kind of like balance out the dynamic. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. So the guy is a special one in the classroom. Yeah. I think they get a lot of attention, to be honest. Yeah, because even when they speak in the class, everybody's quiet. Yeah, like, <laughs> like just... sometimes when another student talks, like maybe some other students aren't focusing or they're talking to themselves. But when one of the male students talks, everybody's like, like everybody's head just turns. Yeah. Hmm. That's um, a privilege to be. <laughs> they're lucky, I think. Yeah, they're lucky. Mm -hmm. Like Lucy used to, to, to be in that classroom, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, like, she used to study in, in Chengdu. Yes, oh. in Chengdu. Okay. And she's an English major as well. Okay. So that's, so that's the thing for <clears throat> English major. Actually, for foreign language, oh. that's the thing for foreign language study. It's always um, uh, females. <laughs> the proportion is much more higher than male students. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, one of the girls was like, gosh, you know, it's really hard for us to find boyfriends because yeah. all the guys in the class have girlfriends already. And we were like, why don't you find someone in a different department? They're right. like, no, it's too hard to like <laughs> see them regularly and get contact with them. So yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you were picked up in Zhengzhou. Um, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Actually, Guangli, they got stuck in traffic that day. Oh, so it wow. took them four hours to get to the airport. So I felt, I felt really bad for yeah. them. It's like we could have taken like a train or something mm -hmm. to meet you instead of you sitting in traffic all the way to meet us. But yeah, we got picked up in, in Jojo and uh, driven to Xinjiang, yeah. I think that's the thing, like, um, like the customs here for welcoming like, newcomers is also a lot more courteous. Than, a lot more hospitable. Yeah, than, than back home. I think back home it's sort of like, Nice to see you. Here you are now. Great. And um, yeah, so I think I think here it's sort of like um, since everybody's so courteous, you want to pay it back in, in kind, right? You want to be like courteous as, as well. But, Definitely. You know. Because you have to get a, a valid work permit. Yeah. We have seen a lot of foreigners, they don't have one, yeah. but they're still working. And that's why we were very much, well, I, that's why I was very much like excited to work with Isaac is because I knew that we were getting an official done route. Yeah. <laughs> Some people were like, "You can come on a on a tourist visa, and then we'll get you, you know, something yeah, we'll else done in the country." And I said, and "No, no, no. The, it, it's not worth it at the end of the day because yeah. right. who uh, knows no, what's going to happen." Exactly. Yeah. And next thing you know, you're you're barred from returning to the country for a certain amount of time. And China's a beautiful place. I I like to visit. Like I don't want to be kicked out of the country. <laughs> Yeah. that I wanted to come yeah, visit, or, you know, or, worse, or work. Yeah. Like, like the Canadian girl being arrested. Oh, yeah. She's, she, she's, yeah. she's working illegally that, oh, yeah. as a foreign teacher. Yeah. And also just like the, you know, sometimes when, when also like more or less, in, less informal organizations, when they don't even do a background check and they're bringing over people with who knows what background, like nobody wants that. Nobody wants that here. Yeah. Nobody wants that back home. Yeah. So... It's just better to go through an official route. Exactly. And it, it, it might take a little bit longer, but you know what? At least you know that you're doing everything properly. Yeah, less stressful overall. Yeah. You know, Canadians are slow and we just like, you know, follow the rules. Yeah, just it's follow the rules, get what you have to get done. Yeah. yeah.
speak so do you guys speak Mandarin or, or just a little bit? I speak a little bit. Um, oh, okay. But not not super fluently, and I also can't read or write very well. You know, having grown up there, it's a shame actually. But you, I'm sure you notice too. I, I understand. Yeah, like lots of kids there, they can speak a little bit, but they're not very fluent. And then you're. Yeah. I can I can order some things, <laughs> <laughs> and I know my numbers. I can ask how much, uh -huh. and I know the numbers. But that's about it. <laughs> so so. Okay. And do you get eight in the class? Um, yeah, some in the classrooms. classrooms. Yeah, he's lucky. Oh, I'm in. I'm in all of the newer classrooms. Yeah, oh, okay. the new buildings are really nice. They have like the new PowerPoint things, like smart boards, good right. heating. Um, I'm in some of the older buildings, so those ones, you know, you might have to wear your coat and stuff in some of the the older facilities. But yeah. it's all right. All the students wear coats. I wear a coat. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They never take their coats off. Yeah, yeah, they, they never, never take their coats <laughs> off. When they go to eat, they come to class, they're yeah, outside, yeah. they never take their coats yeah. off. Yeah, transportation is really, really, really good. Infrastructure is really, really, really good. Mm -hmm. have, you, have you done the high speed rail? Yeah, yeah, we've been using high speed rail to, to get around. The only thing we noticed was that it's really hard to get tickets around the spring festival like oh, wow. days. Yeah. Gosh, it's really hard to get tickets. It's really, really hard. Um, one of the French teachers who was also trying to travel around, she was like, yeah, I, I tried to get tickets to, from our our city to Xi'an. Mm -hmm. And just she she's like, I, I couldn't get them. So I ended up booking the 12-hour the sleeper train. She's like, with and my parents are coming. So just imagine like these three French people like finding their way yeah. on a sleeper train. Oh, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, because she said she had booked the high speed tickets. I don't know what she did. Yeah. But um, the the booking had fallen through. Or like she made a reservation, Station, which yeah. isn't the same thing as actually getting the tickets. So yeah, I think a, a fake would be fun, but a, a, a Jordan would be a superstar in that sleeper train. <laughs> <laughs> Because oh, wow, we got foreign on board. <laughs> yeah, all the little kids always uh, they always go, oh, go red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, then yeah. the parents always feel a little bit embarrassed at first. They're like, stop, stop, stop. And I'm like, no, it's okay. Yeah, I just yeah. wait. <laughs> some of the because in the cafeteria, some of the staff they'll just have their kids there running around, and some of the five or six year olds they'll just see him. And you like, see that their heads go like this, and then they run after him. And there's this one little oh, girl. Oh yeah, she's so cute. Who always like. Runs after him, yells at him, climbs on him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She always wants to sit with us. Yeah, she's really. The kids are really funny. The kids are like, wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have this experience? Like, if someone come up to you and expect you, uh, say Chinese to you, and expect you to speak Chinese with them? Yes. And... Yeah. Sometimes I think probably they they think like, why is this person like so dumb? Because <laughs> they're like, asking me a question when I'm ordering, and I'll be like. Um, or like they'll point at something like on a menu and I can't read, right? So they'll have to repeat themselves a couple times and I think probably in their head they're thinking, this person is really dumb. <laughs> and then, you know, they're they're like, if they're a server or something, they're very polite and they're very patient, but they're probably thinking... But they don't have the time. Mm, they're like, what is wrong with this person, you know? Like, so, so it's really pushing to be like, okay, I have to learn faster, I have to learn faster. <laughs>